full Olympic lifts, i.e. the snatch and clean and jerk, and their derivatives, provide a superior lower extremity training stimulus compared with other forms of training. This is likely due to the triple extension of the hips, knees and ankles that occur during weightlifting movements and many sports skills, such as vertical jumping, sprinting and change of direction tasks. Therefore, proper implementation and progression of weightlifting movements and their derivatives throughout a training year will provide optimal development of an athlete's force velocity profile. The high force end of the force velocity curve features weightlifting derivatives that develop the largest forces due to the loads that can be used. These include mid thigh pull, counter movement shrug, clean or snatch pull from the knee and clean or snatch pull from the floor. During these movements, Due to the decreased displacement of the external load, loads in excess of the athlete's 1RM power clean or snatch can be used. Whereas, weightlifting derivatives that are more ballistic in nature and typically use lighter loads target the high velocity end of the force velocity curve. Two of the most ballistic weightlifting derivatives include the jump shrug and hang high pull. They produce higher velocities compared to mid-thigh clean or snatch, counter-movement clean or snatch, power clean or snatch from the knee, and power clean or snatch from the floor. It should be noted the load used will influence its position on the force velocity curve. For example, the mid-thigh pull out of all the weightlifting derivatives enables the use of the heaviest loads. For example, 140% of one repetition maximum of one's power clean. However, when a light load is used, i.e. 40% 1RM power clean, velocity is maximised. And on the opposite end of the force velocity curve, despite its potential to produce larger peak forces compared to other weightlifting derivatives, for example, hang high pull, when the same loads are used, the jump shrug produces the highest velocities. Nevertheless, because certain weightlifting derivatives place greater emphasis on either force or velocity, a sequential progression and combination of weightlifting derivatives may benefit sporting populations when it comes to enhancing the rate of force development and power output. The article, published in the Strength and Conditioning Journal, titled Enhancing the Force Velocity Profile of Athletes Using Weightlifting Derivatives by Timothy Suchamel and colleagues provides recommendations regarding which weightlifting derivatives to prescribe during five different training phases. Those training phases include strength endurance, maximal strength, absolute strength, strength speed and speed strength. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of their recommendations for each training phase. It should be noted that fundamental movement exercises, such as squatting, pressing and pulling movements, may be prescribed in each training phase. However, the focus here is to ensure sequential progression of weightlifting derivatives to develop an athlete's force velocity profile. Starting off with the strength endurance phase. The goals of this training phase are to 1. Increase the athlete's overall work capacity and 2. Stimulate increases in muscle cross-sectional area. This serves as a building block to enhance force production in subsequent resistance training phases. This is achieved by using a high volume typically between 8 to 12 repetitions, using moderately heavy loads, for example, between 55 and 75% of one repetition maximum. Due to the high volume in each set, cluster sets can be used. This will help to maintain technique integrity. 
in terms of the lifts used, athletic population may dictate which weightlifting movements are prescribed. However, weightlifting derivatives recommended for this phase include the clean or snatch pull from the floor, the clean or snatch pull to the knee, and the clean or snatch grip shoulder shrug. The clean or snatch pull from the floor enables athletes to overload the triple extension of the hips, knees and ankles without the additional stress and complexity of catching the load during every repetition as fatigue develops. Therefore, the technique learned in this phase serves as a foundation that enables the progression to more complex weightlifting movements. In terms of the force velocity profile, these derivatives enable the development of important lower and upper body musculature that will be used to enhance the force velocity profile during later training phases in tandem with fundamental exercises such as squatting, pressing and pulling movements. Moving on to maximal strength. The primary goal of the maximal strength phase is to increase the athlete's force production capacity. This is achieved by completing four to six repetitions using moderately heavy loads, typically between 80 to 90% of one repetition maximum. However, load may be slightly higher with pulling derivatives. For weightlifting catching derivatives, you cannot use loads greater than your one repetition maximum. However, due to a decreased displacement of the load and by not doing the catch phase, pulling derivatives allow loads greater than one repetition maximum to be used. Weightlifting pulling derivatives to emphasize force production include the clean or snatch pull from the floor, the clean or snatch pull from the knee, and the clean or snatch mid thigh pull. In terms of the force velocity profile, Ultimately, the use of heavier loads will target the high force end of the force velocity curve. Moving on to absolute strength. Although the aim here is to increase the general strength characteristics during moderate repetition schemes, for example between 4 to 6 reps, the goals of an absolute strength training phase are to improve low repetition force production characteristics. This is achieved by completing between two to three repetitions using near maximal loads, typically between 90 to 95% of one repetition maximum. Although this can increase to 120 to 140% one repetition maximum with pulling derivatives. Weightlifting derivatives featured in the previous training phase, such as clean or snatch pull from the floor, clean or snatch pull from the knee, and clean or snatch mid thigh pull can be used in this phase, as these derivatives enable the athlete to retain their capacity for high force production. However, additional weightlifting derivatives that include a higher velocity, such as hang power clean or snatch, power clean or snatch, counter movement shrug, counter movement clean or snatch, mid thigh clean or snatch, and the full clean and snatch may be prescribed during warm up and warm down sets and on training days where relative intensities are prescribed to lower the volume load while introducing or retaining a speed strength characteristic. In terms of the force velocity profile, the combination of heavy and moderate loads that enable a higher velocity allows the athlete to train the high force side in addition to aspects of the high velocity side. Moving on to strength speed. The aim here is to further increase rate of force development and power while also maintaining or potentially continuing to develop maximum strength due to its influence on rate of force development, power and ultimately sport performance. This is achieved by using a combination of heavy and light loads. 
However, the emphasis here is to move relatively heavy loads quickly. In terms of the lifts, mid-thigh clean or snatch, counter movement clean or snatch and power clean or snatch from the knee may be used to develop the high velocity portion of the force velocity curve. Whereas the power clean, clean or snatch pull from the floor, clean or snatch pull from the knee and mid-thigh pull may be used to develop the high forced end of the force velocity curve. And moving on to speed strength. The aim here is to produce peak adaptations in rate of force development and power before competition. In other words, increase explosiveness. In terms of how this is achieved, as optimal load for power production may be joint specific, strength level and movement pattern dependent, a range of heavy and light loaded derivatives should be prescribed to train various aspects of an athlete's force velocity profile. In terms of the lifts, a wide variety of weightlifting derivatives that have already been mentioned may be prescribed. However, the jump shrug and the hang high pull are two of the most ballistic weightlifting derivatives and therefore typically feature in a speed strength training phase. In terms of the force velocity profile, to focus training on each extreme end of the force velocity curve, a combination of the mid thigh pull or clean or snatch pull from the floor and the jump shrug and hang high pull may be prescribed. And that concludes the recommendations for prescribing weightlifting derivatives. A combination of catching and pulling derivatives may be used to develop an athlete's force velocity profile. However, when prescribing weightlifting derivatives, the key take home message is that a sequenced approach should be taken to meet the goals of each training phase. This will ensure the optimal development of an athlete's force velocity profile. I recommend you check out the full article if you've not already done so, as it's a great read. Thanks for listening folks, see you next time.